The reason is that, well, we, are, we get a lot of infectious diseases, not only people, but animals and crops. And so we use those antimicrobials in order to treat those infections. So for ourselves, and, or for humans rather, what has been the impact of that is the ability to ha you know, have a longer life. We now survive routine surgeries um, and, and, and we're able to treat infections that, for which there is no vaccine. So that could be an ear infection or a tummy infection, for example. And it's the same for animals because they also are exposed to microorganisms and, this, and we need then antimicrobials to treat them so that they can also get over their infection. Um, for humans, it is uh, increased mo morbidity. This means that we may not be able to do the things that we are able to do f before. We may have longer hospital stays uh, because we cannot treat the infection. The other thing is that this is then associated with higher health care costs and various other sort of economic uh, impacts downstream. In animal production, or the effect of AMR would be reduced output. So now that means that we may not be able to produce as much milk or eggs or um, chicken meat or anything like that because we no longer can treat those infections. We say that antimicrobial resistance is a quintessential One Health issue. And that's really because we use antimicrobials in all the sectors, and all the sectors have resistance. And the resistance is able to transfer between animals and humans and in the environment. So in order to have an impact on reducing antimicrobial resistance, we need to uh, take a One Health approach. That means we need interventions that are in all sectors in order to reduce the reservoirs and to reduce spreading between the sectors. Essentially what we need is a multi-level, multi-sectorial approach. And by multi-level I mean we need all the stakeholders to be at the table and doing whatever they can in order to save the efficacy of the antimicrobials we have at the moment as well as any future antimicrobials that come to the market. That means we have to rationally use it use it when it's necessary and use it in a way that does not promote uh, resistance development. We also need veterinarians, we need doctors, we need the pharmaceutical industry and we need the policy makers also at the same table because we need policy and we need to be able to implement the policy or enforce the policies that we have. It's important that we think, consider where we are. So in a low and middle income context, we need an intervention that is going to be cost effective and sustainable. And that means that we need to look at interventions that are not only targeting antimicrobial resistance, but we need something that targets different things. So it could be by improving access to water, um, improving sanitation. These are called antimicrobial sensitive interventions, and I think it, they will be more cost effective and therefore more sustainable to implement where we have resource limitations. Another very important thing with antimicrobial resistance is that when you implement an intervention, it's not, it's not once off. To, to tackle antimicrobial resistance is a marathon and not a sprint.